It's late over here in Asia, but I wanted to give a shout to Zach Hing. It sounds like Zach King, but that's Zach Hing and his viewers and everybody else in Walkaway about his recent video about more people getting banned and walking away. Um, as I understand, someone recently was calling in to a talk radio show and said that something about Facebook and Google and Twitter have some site, like the way that they've filed with the government makes them a type of public commons already. So there's already some sort, supposedly some sort of a, of a law governing how they've defined themselves as companies already that they have to be super objective in, in, in how they ban people. And if they ban someone for something or they censor someone for something, like they've got to really have a good reason. And it's, I bet, but I can't find anything when I search that on Google. I, I found uh, a Wikipedia article about social media as a public utility. And it's, it's sort of a, it's a quick show. The, the couple downstairs is having a, 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 a 1 a.m. Uh, romantic spat and waking everybody else up in the building. Um, but it, interestingly, though, Zach, you want to talk about someone, you know, Asians, Americans, different countries. I'm in Taiwan and I've got this xenophobic landlord and I'm the big threat. But it's the Taiwanese couple downstairs that's shouting at, you know, 1 a.m. that's that they don't care about, you know. It, it, but you learn to live with that kind of stuff because, you know, I mean, we've got we've got these different, you know, cultures. It's just sort of something that you learn to accept and live with. OK, back to social media. There's there's an argument that Google and Facebook and social media should become public utilities, but there's also an argument that laws are already in place governing that. Probably the public utility argument is going to go forward anyway to stiffen it up. But I, the thing is, I'm not sure about this because I mean I, I'd have to do a lot more research to find out whether or not how they file is some type of a public commons or a, a media commons or something like that, whether that is true and to what extent that actually governs what they're doing. And since there probably haven't been a lot of court cases about it, uh, there might be a lot left open to that. There might be a lot of, in, it might be open to interpretation. So, I mean, look that up with your friends, Zach, like call people, talk to people, however that works. Second thing, you talked about, um, needing the founder or whatever of walk away. Well, walk away is just a hashtag. Okay. A founder typically is a leader of an organization, but uh, you know, a leader, the inventor, the, the starter guy, the first guy charging forward in, in the movement. Um, when I wrote my book, people's party, that, that was sort of kind of a walk away from the Republican party as me being a lifelong conservative uh, from lack of delivered results and realizing how many of my friends that are Democrats that actually agreed with me, but they thought that they just had to stay Democrat, like there wasn't a reason. So my thing with all that was the People's Party. It's a book I wrote, books.jessiesteel.com. Look for it, search Jesse Steel People's Party in the ebook stores, like it's everywhere. And you can buy a paper copy on Amazon. And when I when I wrote that book, and I, I had this concept for this third party that, that, that could, by definition, reach across the aisle. You could have pro-life and pro-choice politicians in the same political party because we agree on several other issues, but not this. So we're going to write the law so it's in my state, but not in yours, but it's a national law. Like that kind of stuff, super flexibility. And if there's one county that wants to opt out, then they can opt out. Like that was my idea. When I wrote that idea, it was all about not having a central leader. So I, I said very clearly, I said, I'm not, I'm not trying to lead and start the people's party. You've got to do it yourself in file for it in your own state. And I, as I believe like the Republican party and the democratic parties, they have a separate filing for every single state. As I understand it, there might be a national filing, but it's also a party that just so happens to be filed in all of the states. And that's kind of how it sort of works. Like we're a nation of plurality, which is why it works so well, supposedly, the experiment that, 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 that there are 50 
ultimate highest authority sovereign governments. And then there's this little tiny small national government in Washington that has to obey these many other super sovereign things called states. And we kind of walked away from that. And that's, that's the great American experiment is what it was, that the sovereign government would be more local, not national. But as, as, as we form the People's Party, I'm hoping anyway, it's got to be formed by the people. So I'm not trying to lead it. See, when, when you've got a movement that has a single point leader, it's easy to just decapitate him. Well, I'm not the leader of the People's Party. I wrote a book about it. I kind of crafted the idea for it, but I'm not the leader for it. So shutting me up won't do any good. So Zach, don't, uh, I, I think, you know, we don't want to seek the decapitatable head. We don't want to grow such uh, an appendage uh, in a manner, you know. So kind of nebulous and uh, just aloof and sort of everybody everywhere, helping everybody peer to peer, constantly, 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 uh, multiple people just everywhere swarming, cooperating together. That is kind of what we need. So it might be a blessing in disguise because it, or it forces us to get organized. Um, you know, a, a lot of times groups get persecuted, they're forced to go underground and they actually get good at grassroots stuff and it actually makes them stronger. So uh, just, just some thoughts. Now, I mean, as for me, I don't have a lot of fear. Um, you know, sometimes, sometimes, you know, someone gets banned and I think that there's like the evil doctor, crazy mad scientist in the back room who's pushing the ban button. I think sometimes he does that and then he goes and writes a fake conservative article. Look who they banned. And I, I just, I just wonder sometimes if part of the idea is to make people more afraid than they need to be. I mean, sometimes Infowars can get a little bit weird. And, and if you get a little bit crazy sometimes, um, I don't know. And then again, maybe just using the hashtag wash, walk away could be all it takes to get banned. I, I, I'm not always sure. But just because someone gets banned, uh, I just want to make sure we don't all totally, totally freak out, flip out, go totally nuts. And another thing too, it might help just to have a lawyer uh, that you contact. You don't even necessarily have to do something that would incur a license, but just ask him, say, can I say that you're my lawyer about this issue? and get some people behind you, uh, get a lawyer that might represent a group of people, uh, get a few, a plurality of lawyers to represent a few people so you can swap the lawyers out so there's no single head to go after. And just remind people in your videos, you know, I've got a lawyer and if someone bans me, by the way, another thing too, Zach, minds.com. Minds.com is another medium that's out there. And I'm, and I'm all about competition anyway. That, that's the thing. I mean, you get a plurality of stuff, plurality in multiple ways. That's kind of the answer to all this stuff. Thanks for warning us about this, Zach. Uh, cheerio, keep it up.